Hey guys, it's Tony Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we are going to be taking a look uh, at the much anticipated, especially for the regulars anyway, look at the Asus Mars 2. Now, for those of you out there that have been living in a cave or, um, yeah, just haven't really been keeping up with your tech a lot lately, the Mars 2 is a fully fledged dual GTX 580 card whereas the uh, 590 uh, isn't, it's a cut down, uh, it's basically, the only way I can really explain it, it's like a dual 570 card, the 590 is like a 570 with a few extra bits from the 580, but it isn't a fully fledged 580 dual, this is, and it's custom from the ground up, uh, it's an Asus PCB, uh, you know, custom PCB design, custom cooling, everything. Now, I know that there's a lot of you out there that are just going to want me to be quiet, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, but just to let you know, we're going to take a good look uh, in and around the card. Uh, you are going to get some nerd porn, as in uh, I'm going to take it apart. And uh, just for all the people out there that are instantly going to start going in the comments, I did all my testing and everything first. Then I took the card apart. But I will say that after I took the card apart and put it back together, the temperatures were actually better rather than worse. Um, but anyway, I normally get those comments, I thought I'd say. Uh, yeah, you get your nerd porn, then we're going to do uh, lots of uh, gaming and benchmarking, and then the conclusion at the end. Uh, we're going to do uh, Crisis 2 in separate videos, because YouTube get arsy about me having ads on Crisis 2 videos. So, uh, you know what I mean? It, it's the way of the beast, but I have to do those videos separately. Um, but then also, in another separate video, uh, if you keep your eyeballs open, I've done a separate video for 5760 by 1080 testing, so triple screen testing with the 580 as well, with the Mars 2 as well. So there's a lot of videos. There's uh, this one alone is going to be immensely long. So we best crack on and get on with having a dirty look at this card. Right then, guys and girlies, I know we've already seen this in the uh, first look kind of thing that I did but I thought while I had the light tent out taking pictures for the uh, main review that I would uh, um, give you a good look round the card and it literally is just going to be so that you can see everything I'll try and move slowly one thing I will point out is uh, if you have a look at this this is all machine Danny Milliam you can see how thick the material is obviously this is anodized red but then you come round into this black this is all machined aluminium it's so thick it's one of the things that adds so much weight to this card it's all really nicely machined it does look really nice I actually think this is the best Limited edition thousand pound. Well, all right, it's gone over a grand now, but the best thousand unit limited card that they've made yet, yeah, um, aesthetically. Obviously, you can see the uh, three eight pins there and the hundred percent fan button. Again, here you can see how thick this alley section is on the top. And in there you can see the uh, two separate banks for the cores with the um, heat sinks inside. Flip it over again. Here there's three lights. And if one of your fan cables isn't connected or not connected properly, it will light up red. But when they're all in, it lights up green. This is a nice, thick, chunky backplate. Thanks to the uh, emergency services for the background noise. Anyway, a lovely back plate, and you can see the print. Obviously, which this will be the actual main part that you'll see in your rig. Well, most rigs. Again, get a good look there at the heat sinks underneath. And then just quickly moving round to the back. Two DVIs. HDMI and a display port. Now do stay tuned because I am just about to take this card apart so I can give you some nerd porn. 
Yes, I did say nerd porn. Isn't it funny how a lot of people have ripped that idea off now? But there's only one of us that really does it properly. <laughs> nerd porn alert! Nerd porn alert! Ooh. Right, I have taken the card apart. I have actually just got it lent here at the moment. So I'm going to take the first bit off. And you can see that the heat sinks underneath. Four chunky heat pipes for each of the heat sinks. I'm now going to remove these heat sinks and stick them up there. And you can see that they're direct contact um, heat pipes. So there you go. No vapour chambers in sight, as you'd see with the 570 and the 580. But there we go, some nudity. I'm going to move the heat sinks back out of the way. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back plate off as well. Just stick the back plate up there. You can see the back plate. No big deal. I've seen that before. But this is what you want to see. So I'm going to give you a slow look along. Don't forget you can pause at any point if you want to see anything. That is a fully fledged GF110. Will it focus? He's trying. Anyway, right. Go from the top. For those of you that thought the power, the fan cables were unplugged before, uh, it's just because you could see them. They weren't unplugged at all. Uh, and just to let you all know that all of the testing is complete, uh, I'm taking this apart afterwards, so you won't be have to worry about the temperatures and stuff. Although the temperatures were very, very good throughout the main body of the uh, testing. Look at all those power rigs. Now if we flick the card over, up here again is the three um, lights for the um, power. You can see that we've got the uh, NEC talking chip on the back. You see a lot of those on the Asus, they use those a lot. And uh, uh, obviously more memory chips as well. I'll go back to the uh, money side. I've left, before you ask, I've left this on because um, this is a really thick kind of thermal paste stroke putty and I've, I've not got anything anywhere near that size to be able to put back on so I've left it there. But, yeah. There we go guys, one fully fledged dual GTX 580 PCB, courtesy obviously of Asus, which they decided to call the Mars 2. Doesn't get much more extreme than that. Right then guys, on to the first of the two 3D Marks. We're doing uh, the P scores for this one. Uh, 3D Mark 11, and this, I've got to admit, it's the first time I've ever seen above 10,000. 11,090. Uh, uh, when I did the uh, benches for the review, I did get slightly higher than that. It was 140. But anyway, obviously the scores can fluctuate. And then P-score for 3D Mark Vantage was 44,425, and that's obviously with the 950 at 4GHz. The uh, GPU score was 40,000, as you can see below, 40,150. CPU score was 65,273. 
Now, uh, I'm going to move on. Uh, I can only do uh, Vantage on high because uh, for extreme you need a 1920 by 1200 monitor and this is 1080. Uh, but we're going to do X on 11 and high on Vantage. Right then, on to uh, H for Vantage and Extreme for 11. As you can see, we've got an Extreme score of 4009. Uh, I know cards that don't score that in P. But anyway, absolutely nut score for Extreme. And then High on Vantage uh, gives us 34,155. 31,428 for the GPU and again 67,214 for the CPU because I leave uh, um, physics on. Uh, just to show you again for the temps 79 max, 77 max and uh, throughout the testing that we've done so far it's not budged at all but anyway uh, I'm going to do some folding at home quickly now and then uh, it will be time to crack on uh, with the. What will it be time to crack on with, Tom? It will be time to crack on with the games testing. Right then, guys, moving on to some folding at home, uh, making the card scream out in agony, where it's been literally maxed out. Uh, temperatures are pretty good, actually. It's been running for a little while now, and. Uh, 81, that's actually the hottest I've seen the cards go at all, and it has made the fan spin up a fair bit. Throughout the game testing, it hardly um, went up at all, and I only ever saw a maximum of uh, 79 degrees. But if you have a look, we're getting about 17,500 on each card, giving us a rough 35,000 PPD. Uh, you can see they're the team there, 98860, that is the... Uh, uh, OC 3D folding team or I should say Redline at OC 3D folding team. If you go to the YouTube channel you'll see that I've put links up. Uh, if you go to the uh, folding part of the um, uh, forums plenty of information there and I will be doing a video in the not too distant future after I've moved to let you know the full ins and outs of folding at home. Uh, but yeah for all those folders out there just you know, it's not something you're going to buy for folding, but 35,000 PPD on one card. <laughs> it's not a bad going, is it? And like I said, you can see the uh, temps there again. And uh, the fans have ramped up a bit. It's coping fairly well, because like I said, it's being absolutely uh, pillaged there by the folding at home, but yeah. There we go. Right then guys and girlies, it's time for the game tests. We're going to start off with the uh, good old favourite which is Crisis Warhead. But if I zoom in, you can see that we've got it on 16 times Q, which is completely maxed out. And if Strawberry flicks across, we've got everything on Enthusiast as well. Now before we start the game, uh, I am using an afterburner to show the frames per second, which is why it's so big at the top. Uh, but it's also a pain in the ass because to get it that big, it's getting those little kind of notches on the numbers. Uh, but I can't do anything about it. The only way I can get rid of it is by making the letters smaller. So it's either having them big with the little blocks or having it small. So I've left it big for the time being. Also, red seems to be the best colour for in game for you to actually be able to see it as well. Um, just in case anyone's wondering, we're using obviously the Mars, which is off to the left, to the right, sorry. The speakers are side speakers with a little side amp, and the monitor is a Yama Pro Lite E2473. Um, but anyway, we're going to uh, bring you, zoom you back in a bit, and uh, good old Mr. Strawberry, who's down there. Stick your hand up, Straubs. Up more, that's it. There we go. You can see his watch and everything. Anyway, he's going to be uh, playing badly, but better than me. Uh, and we'll do this, and then we'll move on to some other games as well. But anyway, Straubs, get that game loaded up.
So yeah, this is the first time we're using the um, afterburner um, frames per second doofer, which is at the top. We'll see how we get on with it. Remember, this is the game's completely maxed out. Having that 16 times Q on makes an immense amount of difference. I got the feed from O'Neill's camera. The helicopter that just passed by was carrying a shielded cask for spent nuclear fuel. The KPA are known to co opt those casks for carrying nuclear warheads. We've got a situation here. Okay. You've been practicing that by any chance? <laughs> okay, you fucked up. They called in reinforcements. <gasps> he swore he said fucked up. Shit, I probably shouldn't have said fucked up either, should I? Because fucked up's a naughty word. You shouldn't be saying fucked up because fucked up's a naughty word. Oops. Anyway, I think we've had enough of this. I think it's now time to move on to Crisis 2. Right, on to Metro. This is with the game completely maxed out. We've had to use the... <coughs> had to use Frat because it wouldn't start with uh, Afterburner open. At least you'll be able to see the difference between the two and tell me which one you prefer. So, large afterburner or small fraps, what do you like?
Right then guys, on to uh, Witcher 2. I warn you that Straubs has not got an, a clue what he's doing. He hasn't got Scooby, so he's just running around. Obviously we're now back on the afterburner. Um, Friends for second meter. Uh, the game is uh, completely maxed out. Yes, that does mean Uber sampling. Everything's turned on, maxed out, done whatever we can with it. Um, so yeah, I will uh, just leave you to watch Strawberry running around aimlessly because he doesn't know what he's doing and watch the frames per second at the top. Let's face it, it's not like you can miss it. One thing I will say is for the first time today the fans have just started to ramp up a bit. Um, and it's the first time since we've been playing today that it's it's done it at all. Actually, while um, Straubs is playing, I'll uh, walk you over to the uh, card. That's the first time it's ramped up today. She's obviously getting a bit warm. I'm going to give it a blast on 100% and we'll see uh, if it cools it down a bit. Let me go back to what it was before. I think it's just because uh, Witch is really demanding. No, it's not gone back down below what it was before. But anyway, we'll come back over. It's raining and the uh, frames a second has just fallen on its arse, look. The fans definitely are uh, um, spinning up with this game. <laughs> it's obviously putting a lot of stress on that card. 
because uh, Strawberry was playing uh, Crisis 2 for a couple of hours earlier and it didn't um, didn't even touch the fan speed. Anyways guys, as you can see, Strawberry is absolutely shocking at this. Um, but then again, I'm not exactly sure what he's meant to be doing. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I thought he might do that, Strawberry. Well, uh, um, we'll leave this section of the video here. Did you make it right the way to the end without skipping? Did you? Anyway, right. Uh, there's a lot for me to cover in the conclusion, so you best get comfortable. Uh, but as I have been a lot lately, I'll let you know the award and then we'll explain why. Uh, the award we're going to give it is the OC3 Performance Award. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to go into explaining a lot of that, about it, but I need to explain about the uh, card itself as well. Because originally, uh, it was meant to have been a dual 480 card. And I did leak some pictures that uh, I got my hands on a long time ago about the Mars 2 for dual 480. But back then, nobody knew that Nvidia had been beavering away trying to work uh, all the heat problems out of the um, 400 series. And Nvidia pretty much surprised everyone, including Asus and EVGA, and I say EVGA because of the 460 to win card. Uh, they surprised everyone with the 500 series. Uh, so rather than Asus then bringing a Dual 480 out, then a Dual 580 out, they basically scrapped the original design, took it back, went and redesigned the PCB, polished everything up, chucked two 580s on it, obviously waited till the end of the 580 series, because let's face it, it makes good business sense for them to do this at the end. Um, and then they brought us the Mars 2 Dual 580 version. Um, so they deserve a lot of thumbs up for scrapping the original 480. EVGA didn't with the 460 to win. Uh, I still think the 460 to win should have been at least adapted for the 560, considering that it's technically the same socket. They would have had to have made some changes with the BIOS and a few bits on the design and power and stuff, but nothing major. Asus, like I said, they took the uh, 480 dual back. Um, they didn't pursue it any further, they turned all their attentions then onto the 580 and I, yeah, I can't say how much I like the aesthetics of this card enough because the, uh, the thick aluminium across the top is just, it's a work of art, I really really like it, it adds so much weight to the card as well, very very brave of them to put that much material on there. But also, as I showed you earlier on in the video, the heat sinks there's no uh, vapour chamber in sight, it's just direct contact heat pipes, heat, um, heat sink on the top, normal fins, there's not even that much fin space there, you know, um, uh, real estate there for the fins really when you think about it, and just a couple of fans on the top. Now yeah alright, uh, 580 is quieter, technically a couple of 580s is quieter as well. We've got to remember this is all on one card, it's all, do you know what I mean, all the heat can kind of build up together, I think Thermally, they've done an outstanding job of this card, um, and I mean absolutely amazing. Yeah, the fans do ramp up if you play the games for a bit, but I left this on auto, and it was only really Witcher 2 and Folding at Home that made any difference to the fan speed. Uh, Straubs was playing Crisis 2 for a couple of hours, maybe three hours. Fan speed didn't, uh, you know, not looking at the fan speeds as in looking at a graph, but you know, just listening with your ear, it didn't sound like the fans had you know ramped up at all. It was just sat there quietly, like it is now. Um, so yeah, as far as you know, aesthetically, it's amazing. Um, Engineering-wise, it's amazing, and performance-wise, pretty damn good as well. Now I say pretty damn good because it is pretty much smack bang on the money with two 580s. Um, two stock 580s I might add. Uh, if you were to put the two 580s 
uh, at the same clocks as uh, the Mars, then the 2580s may eke a little bit more out and pull in front. Uh, but there's not really a massive amount in it. And what we've got to remember is that they are both going on that same single PCI Express, well, 16 time PCI Express lane, and it's, yeah, there, there's, there, uh, with the way it is now with two stock 580s versus the stock Mars, the stock Mars just pulls in front. Um, but like I said, don't, a lot of people will go, oh, should I be getting a Mars 2 or a 590? Well, hang on a minute, you could get two 590s for the price of a Mars. And yeah, alright, the Mars will be slightly in front, but, do you know what I mean? Do I need to say any more than, like I said, it's tried to say before, a 590 isn't two 580s. Um, but anyway, I completely lost my train of thought then, and I was on such a roll. Uh, so, the, yeah, performance-wise, it is on the money it's smidge, and I do mean a smidge, in front of um, a pair of 580s. But what you've got to bear in mind with the Mars card is uh, with all the research and development and, uh, and the fact that there's a, such a limited run of them, if Ace has sold more of these cards, then uh, they'd probably be able to bring the price down a bit to the point where, I mean, it's around about £1,150-£1,200 in the UK, looking at $1,500 in the States and, you know, at other prices I don't really know. Uh, they, Whether they're only selling a 1000 of them, I think that's why the price is so high, because they are trying to make it limited. Um, I think if they uh, had this as, like, the, the Asus Republic of Gamers 590, uh, whereas they, um, you know, they would sell it as two fully fledged 580s, maybe put the price in at above the dual 580 price. I mean, you can get 580s for about 350 quid in the UK, so we'll say 750 for a pair of 580s. I think if they put this on the market, obviously more volume, so not limited, at about 8 850, I still think they would sell an amazing amount of it. I think they'd sell a lot more than you'd imagine as well. I think really that £1,200 price tag is just because of that limited badge. Because, I mean, this is 518 of 999. Um, I think they're trying to do it like that, so they're making you pay for it that way. I also don't think they would really want a lot of these about. I don't think they'd want to be making so many of these. I remember with the original Mars that they shut the production lines down for the 285s for, and they, I think they were. Literally, it was like the to produce the original Mars, the two production lines were running at about 15% of what they would have done because it took them so much longer to make the Mars than it would do to make 285s. They could have made an astronomical amount of 285s compared to what they had done. I wouldn't, you know, I would think that that's probably the same kind of thing here. Um, so then take longer to make, obviously, there was. Uh, um, the development costs, because it is their own design. Um, so I think that's you know why they'd have, they'd have to sell a lot more to bring that price down. Uh, but I think if they did, they'd be probably quite surprised because, as it is now, uh, if you said to me, right, it's either two five eighties or a Mars, what would I tell you to get? Well, I'd obviously tell you to buy two individual five eighties. Um, but if it came down to two five eighties or a Mars, and it was like 800 quid, 850 quid, it, it, it could be a lot different because this type of thing, you'd probably be, especially if you're going to be playing with three screens, you would be better off with a Mars on your Sandy rig because then you'd be getting all the 16 lanes on uh, the card. Um, whereas if you had two 580s, you'd be splitting them up between eight times, which I know a lot of you are now instantly going to go, well, technically there's two 580s sharing the same 16 lanes. But you'd have it on a single slot, a single power, so you wouldn't have worries about the cards sitting next to each other and stuff. I probably would, in that instance, be telling you to buy one of these only if that price was down. As it is, as it stands at the moment, I probably, you know, I know probably because of the price, I'd be telling you now to buy a pair of 580s and you'd have money left over for water cooling. You could buy an entire water cooling loop for both the 580s, rads, pumps, everything. Um, if you had the same sort of money to spend as what this costs, you could buy a pair of 580s and a 240 gigabyte Kingston uh, HyperX 
uh, Sabre 3 solid state drive. Do you know what I mean? It, you could buy three 580s and still have money left over for a 120 gigabyte solid state drive. So it's just that eye water in price. Um, but that's why we decided to give it the OC3D Performance Award rather than the Gold Award because the price is just so ridiculous because you are paying for um, uh, you know the name and the limitedness of it. Um, and yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it really is kind of a difficult one. It, it works so well for 580s. Um, for a pair of 580s and to get them working this well, this cool, looking this nice on a single card definitely deserves a thumbs up. I mean performance wise I can't fault it. Uh, apart from the fact it doesn't really overclock. I mean there were a few little uh, niggles with uh, the software whereas um, you can't uh, apply an overclock to both cores at the same time and with this sample that I've got the GPU, the second GPU, um, actually for some strange reason in the ASUS overclocking software has a h higher um, GPU V core available than the first one and I couldn't, couldn't work that out at all and it was a fair old difference in voltage, dif you know, difference as well. If you max one um, uh, slider out and then saved it, went on to the second one, the second one the slider could actually go further. Um, and I mentioned that to the ASUS rep, and he was like, no, I've not heard of that before. So it's obviously not something that's you know, meant to be there. So that was a bit quirky, but the software with these dual cards always has been quirky. Um, the drivers are definitely much better, and I mean much better. The, um, we had no problems with games. Every game was you know, absolutely swallowing everything available. The, both the cores were being you know, utilised as you'd expect. That's why it's so on the money with a pair of 580s, because the drivers are brilliant. They are much better. Um, with the Ares, which was an ATI um, variant, some of the problems that we were getting with the drivers are just unreal. Especially when you tried to crossfire them, it was just it was a blatantly, you know, they built the, um, the card to be run individually. Uh, I can say net well, I'm not going to say it, yeah, I saw it, I'm going to say it. Um, I spoke to Asus this afternoon and they're going to send me the second card that they've got, because there's two of these in the UK, so I, they've told me to keep hold of this one for the time being, and they're going to send me the second one. So later on, it's going to be, because I'm moving now, so that it's going to be a couple of three weeks time, it may even be my first video back after the move, don't know yet, but we are going to be doing Mars and SLI, just for, uh, to see what we can do really. But anyway, back on topic, uh, it's, it is, the price is eye-watering, um, and it is an e -ping, basically. You buy this because it's limited, you buy this, you know, to put in your signature on your forums, or, you know, to be able to say you've got one. Um, but for those of you out there that are just after performance, and if it's a, should I buy a Mars 2, or should I buy this, um, if it's dual 580s, go and buy dual 580s, save the money, buy some more water cooling, uh, buy another 580 if you're bored, it's triple SLI compatible. Um, like I said, this is just about the rarity of the card, to be able to say you've got one, um, or if you just you absolutely don't care about how much something costs and you just got to have it, because it does look the part, it does look really nice. To the point where it looks so nice, you'd need a mirror in the bottom of your case just so that you could see the card. <laughs> but, absolutely cracking card. I've thoroughly enjoyed um, uh, playing with this over the last few days, and I have made an immense amount of videos testing. Uh, it's only been here two days now, and we're, we're done. I'm getting ready to upload videos and stuff this evening so that you'll get them tomorrow. Really, really have enjoyed working on this. Uh, and yeah, it's an absolute cracker. Um, it's just a shame, really. Well, it's, it's, it's a testament to Asus that not, you know, nobody else really bothers to do something this big, you know, with, to take on this big a project. Um, but you know, they really, it does put a smile on your face with stuff like this. It's like, it's like the Bugatti Veyron of uh, graphics cards. You know what I mean? It's just no holds barred. Sod it. We'll do the cram as much as we possibly can do on it and make it work right because I'd have money on them losing money on these only selling a thousand especially when you add everything up and actually think about a business sense rather than it's 2580s it's cost too much 
But anyway, I've rambled enough. But that's because I've thoroughly, you know, I had so much to say. It was I had too many ideas bouncing in my head at the same time. So hopefully I've covered everything. Um, but just to recap, price, nah. Performance is absolutely smack on with uh, a pair of 580s. Um, so if you're going to buy it, you're just buying it for the aesthetics and to be able to say you've got one. If you're just buying it for performance, then you're better off going with the 580s. You know, a pair of, you know, single 580s. Um, so hopefully, I've answered all your questions. Uh, hopefully the video is long enough. Don't forget, like I said, uh, I am going to be uploading other videos as well. We've got the Crisis 2 videos and we've got the triple screen video as well. So I've done that as a separate video entirely. Um, but this card is an absolute monster. If it was cheaper, I'd be telling you to buy it. It's not, so I've explained enough already. Anyway, oh, deep breath. Now I have an absolute mission of uh, rendering in front of me. But for now at least, this is Tony Tom Logan with the Asus Mars 2 out. <laughs>